Here we're gonna derive a nice and pretty famous trigonometric identity. So although this isn't the first place that this identity was mentioned, maybe the most famous place it was mentioned was in the College Math Journal, and that's from June 1982. So we're gonna find a nice closed form for tangent three pi over 11 plus four times sine of two pi over 11. We're gonna use Euler's formula, that is e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta, along with some stuff about roots of unities. And to partition this into some individual steps, we're gonna derive a couple of sub-identities along the way. So if we let z equal e to the two pi i over 11, so that's a primitive 11th root of unity, then four sine two pi over 11, is the same thing as two i times the quantity z to the 10 minus z. And then furthermore, tangent of three pi over 11 is equal to i and then z to the eight plus z to the seven, z to the six, z squared plus z minus i times z to the 10 plus z to the nine plus z to the five plus z to the four plus z cubed. So now let's maybe go ahead and prove this first identity first. So we'll do that by taking this value of z, which is e to the i 2 pi over 11, and expanding it with Euler's formula. So that's gonna be equal to cosine 2 pi over 11 plus i times sine 2 pi over 11. Nice. So next, we're gonna raise this to the 10th power Notice that if we raise that to the 10th power, we're going to get e to the i 20 pi over 11. But notice, that's the same thing as e to the i 2 pi times e to the minus i 2 pi over 11. And that's because e to the i 2 pi is just equal to one, that's pretty easy to see. So then we can write this as one times the Euler expansion of this. So that'll give us cosine of minus two pi over 11, but cosine is an even function. So that means it's cosine of two pi over 11. And then we'll have minus i sine of two pi over 11. Again, we're using the fact that sine is an odd function. Okay, nice. So next what we'll do is subtract z to the 10th minus z. And notice that when we do that, the cosine terms cancel, and then we'll have a minus two times i times sine of two pi over 11. But we want four times sine of two pi over 11, so we can get that by multiplying both sides of this equation by two times i. So noticing, notice multiplying the left-hand side of the equation gives us exactly what we want on this side. Multiplying the right-hand side will give us four times minus i squared, but that's gonna be like minus one times minus one, so that cancels out and we have sine of two pi over 11, which is exactly what we wanted to show for this first tool. And now we're ready to look at this second tool, which involves the tangent of three pi over 11. So I'll first write W equals E to the I two pi over 22. So this is gonna be like a primitive 22nd root of unity. So let's notice that this is the same thing as E to the I pi over 11, just by canceling the numerator with the denominator in the exponent. Next, we can see that if we raise w to the third power, we'll get e to the i three pi over 11, which is exactly the kind of thing that we want since we've got a tangent of three pi over 11. So now let's expand that using Euler's formula. So we've got w cubed is equal to cosine three pi over 11 plus i times sine three pi over 11. So next, we wanna look for maybe the inverse of this. So maybe we'll think about this a slightly different way, although it is completely analogous to how we did this in the last example. So let's think that W to the minus three is the same thing as W to the 19. So how do we know that? 
We'll notice w to the 19 times w cubed is equal to w to the 22, but w to the 22 is one. So these are nice multiplicative inverses of each other. And we know that w to the 22 is one because that gives us e to the i two pi. Okay, but then expanding this using Euler's formula and the parity of cosine and sine will give us cosine three pi over 11 minus I sine three pi over 11. And this kind of thing with roots of unities uh, having inverses, which are their complex conjugates is always true and fairly well known. Okay, nice. So next what we'll do is form two equations out of this to cancel out the cosine and then cancel out the sine separately so that we have cosine and sine by themselves and we can form tangent. So let's do that. So notice we have w to the 19 plus w cubed. So that is going to be, well, let's see, the sines cancel and we get two times cosine of three pi over 11. So next, maybe we'll do w to the 19 minus w cubed. Now the cosines cancel and we double up on the imaginary part. We'll have minus 2i times sine of 3 pi over 11. Next, we'll use the fact that the tangent is equal to the sine over the cosine. And we will see immediately that minus i times tangent of three pi over 11. So notice the twos cancel, but we still have that minus i term. So that will be equal to w to the 19 minus w cubed over w to the 19 plus w cubed. But we can actually simplify this a little bit. And we can simplify this using the fact that w squared is equal to z because notice w squared is going to be equal to e to the two pi i over 11, which is what we called z. So we can maybe factor out a w cubed from the numerator and the denominator. So that's gonna give us a w cubed here, and then we'll have w to the 16 minus one, all over, we'll factor out a w cubed here too. We'll have w to the 16 plus one, and now those w's cancel. And since w squared is equal to z, we have that this is just equal to z to the eight minus one over z to the eight plus one, like that. Okay, so it may not seem like this is super helpful, but at this stage, we can actually replace the numerator with something that can be divided by the denominator pretty easily. But since we're kind of running out of room, let's bring this line to the top and we'll finish it off. We ended the last board with the following equation. So we've got minus i times tangent of three pi over 11 equals z to the eight minus one over z to the eight plus one. Now we wanna use the fact that z is an 11th root of unity. That means that z to the 11 is equal to one. That also means that z to the 88 is also equal to one because z to the 88 is just gonna be one to the eighth power. So we'll take the one that is right here and we'll replace it with z to the 88. So let's do that. We have z to the eight minus z to the 88 all over, I'm gonna write this as one plus z to the eight. I'll just switch those around. Next, I can factor a z to the eight out of the numerator equals z to the eighth times one minus z to the 80 all over one plus z to the eighth. Next, we're gonna use a pretty common factorization trick in order to cancel that denominator. And we're gonna think about this portion of the numerator as one minus z to the eight all to the 10th power. Okay, so let's see what that does for us. That's gonna give us this z to the eight out front. And then we can use, like I said, the factorization trick, which really stems from the difference of squares formula or the difference of cubes formula or so on and so forth.
And then we can write the next part as one minus z to the eight plus z to the 16 minus z to the 24 plus z to the 32 minus z to the 40 plus z to the 48 minus z to the 56 plus z to the 64 minus z to the 72. So next what we'll do is take this z to the 8 and distribute it through. So let's do that. Now that we've got this all distributed through, we can reduce the exponents mod 11. We can do that again because z to the 11 is equal to one. So we'll just subtract multiples of 11 until we have something between zero and 10. So we'll leave eight as itself. Then notice z to the 16 is gonna be the same thing as z to the five because we can factor out a z to the 11. This will be the same thing as z to the tw two because we can factor out a z to the 22. Let's see, this will be z to the 10. This one right here will be z to the seven. This one right here will be the same thing as z to the four. This one right here will be the same thing as z to the first power. This one right here will be the same thing as z to the nine. Let's see, this one right here is gonna be the same thing as z to the eight. And then this one right here will be the same thing as z cubed. So now we have minus i times tangent of three pi over 11 is equal to this combination of powers of z between one and 10. Now all that's left to do is multiply both sides of this equation by i. So that'll make a minus i squared or a positive one over on the left hand side. And over on the right hand side, we will achieve exactly this. Now that we have these two tools built, we're ready to finish it off. So now all that remains is to add the right hand side of these two objects and do a little bit more simplification. So notice both terms on the right hand side are multiplied by i, so I can go ahead and factor an i out of that whole thing. Now it's just a matter of combining like terms. So here's what we get. We'll get z to the 10 and then plus z to the eight plus z to the seven plus z to the six plus z squared. Okay, so that's our first term. And then the rest of the terms are attached to a minus sign. So this is gonna be minus z plus z cubed plus z to the fourth plus z to the fifth plus z to the ninth. Maybe the important thing to notice here is that these are in pairs. So notice here we've got an exponent of 10, here we've got an exponent of one. 10 plus one is 11, so that means z to the 10 and z to the one are inverses of each other. Similarly, z to the eight and z cubed are also inverses. So I'm actually gonna give these two things some names. I'm gonna call this guy right here A, and I'm gonna call this guy right here B. And I wanna notice that that allows me to rewrite this as I times A minus B. Now, if we can do a little bit more analysis on A and B, maybe we can simplify this a little bit. Next, I wanna notice that if I take A plus B and then add one to it, you might say, well, why am I gonna add one? And that's because between A and B, we have all of the powers of Z between one and 10, but we're missing this zeroth power of Z. So let's see, that's gonna give us Z to the 10 plus Z to the nine plus all the way down to Z squared plus Z plus one. That may not seem super helpful, but we can factor that like Z to the 11 minus one over z minus one. But we know that z to the 11 is one because it's a primitive 11th root of unity, so that makes this whole thing zero. So in other words, we have a plus b equals negative one, given again that a plus b plus one was equal to zero. Next, what we can do is take a times b and see what we get. So let's take a times b, and if we take a times b, well, notice we've got all of those inverse pairs. 
So we've got z to the 10 times z to the one, z to the eight times z cubed, z to the seven times z to the fourth, and the last two as well. Each of those inverse pairs will give us a one, and there are five total pairs. So we'll get five, and then next, we'll get two of all of the cross terms. So notice we'll get two of all of the rest of them, like z to the 10 times z cubed, and then so on and so forth. But it's not too hard to check that all of the cross terms will multiply up to a plus b. That tells us that we have five plus two times a plus b, but a plus b is negative one, so that tells us that this is three. Okay, so let's bring these two values of a plus b and a times b up and we're ready to finish it off. So we've written our goal expression as i times a minus b, where a and b are defined up here by these under braces in orange. And on the last board we determined that the sum of a and b was negative one and their product was three. But let's maybe use that and form a quadratic polynomial out of a and b. Again, what I mean by that is that the roots of this quadratic polynomial will be a and b. So let's take x minus a times x minus b. So that's clearly a quadratic polynomial with roots a and b. But if we multiply this out, we'll get x squared minus a plus b times x plus a times b, like that. Again, that's just from foiling this guy out. But we know a plus b and we know a times b, so this is x squared plus x plus three. So we've got a quadratic polynomial, we know the roots are a and b, and we also know that it takes on that form. So that tells us that a and b can be determined by using the quadratic formula on this. In other words, setting this quadratic polynomial equal to zero and solving. So we'll get a and b come from the following set. So this is going to be negative one plus i times the square root of 11 over two. Again, I'm just getting these by the quadratic formula. And then negative one minus i times the square root of 11 over two. A is one of those and B is the other. Maybe a way to write that is that the set containing A and B is equal to the set containing those two roots. But what that tells us is that in the end, we have their difference will be plus or minus I times the square root of 11. Because notice if we take the difference of these two, well, the real part is gonna cancel, and depending on the order of the difference, we'll either get a plus or a minus i. But multiplying that by i will give us plus or minus 11. But you can do some fairly simple analysis to figure out where in the unit circle three pi over 11 and two pi over 11 to determine that both of these should be positive, meaning that minus square root of 11 is not a possibility meaning that plus square root of 11 is our solution. And that's a good place to stop.